First tonight, in April of 1945, a U.S. Navy patrol boat called Eagle 56 sank six miles off the coast of Cape Elizabeth. Only 13 of the 62 crew members survived. Their deaths were especially poignant and senseless because Germany was thoroughly beaten and would officially surrender just two weeks later. For decades, the U.S. Navy believed the ship went down after a boiler blew up, but that's not what happened. Now, 74 years later, the real story of Eagle 56 is being told in a three-part documentary that will air on the Smithsonian Channel this month. The series called for the hunt for Eagle 56 was produced by Lone Wolf Media in South Portland. We talked about the series with producer R. Jamison Smith and diver Ryan King. Now, King lives in New Hampshire and is not a professional diver. And he told us what he felt when he became the first person ever to see the wreck of Eagle 56 on the ocean floor off Maine. When that thing came into view, it was the, the most awesome thing I'd ever seen. It was just incredible awe. We surfaced. You get down there, you're swimming along, and you're this mud bottom, and then all of a sudden you see this giant wall of steel. And so that wall of steel, you head up, you start swimming, swimming up, you see that, and then you start to see the gun and the other machinery, and you realize that you've got, you've got a shipwreck. Now, you were in on this pretty much from the beginning, from the time roughly when he saw the remains for the first time. At that point, did you guys say to yourselves, yes, we have got one heck of a story here. These guys are incredible divers, but they don't do this professionally. So all of a sudden, we had this story thrust in our laps of this incredible war story, this incredible loss of life being resolved by everyday guys who anyone could relate to, to try and accomplish something extraordinary. It's not just a rich piece of history, but it's also, it turns out, a great mystery story in effect because the version of events from the Navy had long been that the Eagle had a boiler that blew up, and that is what caused the vessel to go down, correct? Correct. Correct. When you were diving, you found something that told you that version may not be accurate. What was it that you discovered? So we finally found the boilers, and they're intact. So we, the, this past summer, we went down, we started swimming along, we found some wreckage, followed the trail, found these two intact boilers that look like you could just lift them up, put them in the ship, and we'd be ready to go again. And at that point, history changes because this vessel, one of the last to be sunk by Germany in the final days of Germany's involvement of World War II, did not sink by accident. So you know now that your story has just gone and it has really zigzagged. And, and I think that's one of the most incredible aspects of this whole experience of making this show, making it with these guys, was to see in real time the historical record that so many people have become comfortable with change before our eyes. And not only change, but change in a way that affects the lives of the family members of those lost on that ship that are still living today. People shouldn't get the idea that it was just, you know, kind of an easy thing for you to go out six miles off the coast of Cape Elizabeth into 260 feet of water and make this discovery. First of all, visibility. How much can you see down there? 25 feet on a good day, five feet on most days. How difficult is it to simply be in those waters for a fairly extended period of time? Our dives are two to two and a half hours long, sometimes three hours. The water on the bottom is no more than 42 degrees. And we're spending all of that time, and then a little bit, we've spent about an hour in that top layer above the thermocline. It's still 60. And then there are other dangers. At one point, you and your crew actually hooked on to a depth charge from the vessel. Not just one. Not just one. Oh, we realize. <laughs> How many were there? There are 20 there. Uh, initially, the rack that we hooked on to had seven. 20 depth charges, explosive devices that were typically used in those patrol boats, which is how much TNT? Over a thousand pounds, easy. And still live, quite possibly. Sitting there as if they're ready to be used. All these years later. What were the challenges that you faced in telling this story on film? Well, uh, the biggest challenge, obviously, is from a logistical perspective. We've got their dive boat, which is of limited size, about 27 feet. We have a whole production crew, and we have to capture images both topside and down on the bottom. So it, it became a real challenge to figure out what was our cocktail of logistics. How many crew could we send out on the boat at any given time? How many trips could we take with these guys? Because essentially we're utilizing their resources and tagging along for the trip. And how could we most effectively capture these images? Because they've got enough to do at the bottom that's all technical work. We need to send a high quality camera team down there to be able to capture not only the wreck itself, but them working on the wreck. 
What became clear was that obviously the ship was attacked by the Germans and that is why it went down. When you talked to the families of the sailors who died on that vessel and some of the sailors who survived, what did you hear from them? Thank you. That was, I mean, many of the families that have contacted us since the, the news came out have really told us about how they appreciate the closure. Uh, we were able to give them a place where their loved ones had actually perished. And as a movie storyteller, that must have been particularly gratifying for you to really be able to finally bring an ending and bring some closure to the people whose lives are still affected by this heartbreak. It was the most remarkable part of this experience. We went down to Tennessee for a Purple Heart ceremony given to an African-American sailor who went down on the wreck who never received his Purple Heart. Uh, we sent Ryan and Jeff, one of the divers, down there. We went and met with her, his sister, who's still living, 93 years old. I believe so. And she sat there and, and told us directly to her face that she knows that her mother was up in heaven wondering where her son was and would be so grateful to know that he's finally been found. You get a little emotional just talking about it, don't you? I do. Uh, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a very emotional ceremony and luckily they didn't catch me crying on camera, but <laughs> you tried. <laughs> and we should mention that you're not a professional. You don't do this for a living. No. You don't get paid for it. You and your colleagues do it just because you like it. The divers that I dive with, my friends, I work for a school district, we have a meat truck driver, we have a propane technician, we have a couple of engineers, another IT guy, a prison guard, we, we're just regular guys. And it's amazing what you can do if you just stay focused on it and work towards it. The documentary series, The Hunt for Eagle 56, will air on the Smithsonian Channel. You can see part one on Sunday, September 22nd at 9 p.m.